Panel upgrades are fun projects and they don't always have to be big or expensive to make a nice improvement. My very first upgrade after I bought the Bonanza was the audio panel, when I replaced the Garmin GMA340 with the much more capable PMA8000BT from PS Engineering. That was in 2012 and since then technology has improved further, to the point where another audio panel upgrade is now meaningful. I'm sticking with the PS Engineering brand and will install their popular PMA450B audio panel. Come along and I'll show you not just how we installed and tested this audio panel, but we'll also take a look at the company which designed and built this product. So why upgrade, you wonder? What can this new audio panel do for me that's so special? Well, my 8000 BT already sounds really good, but there are many little things and a few big ones which are improved in the 450B. And as so often, these things add up. I'll talk about some of them in a bit, but first, let's listen to this recording I made before the upgrade. Did you get all that? Yeah, me neither. What we just listened to was two radio transmissions at the same time, from COM1 and COM2, like you would hear when receiving the ATIS on one radio while listening to approach or center on the other. And usually that means you don't understand much of either one. To me, that is the biggest improvement the PMA450B will bring. It has something called IntelliAudio, which takes these two radios and puts them in different locations in space to help me listen to them. And we'll take a good look at it during the test flight. Now, the installation is very simple because the 450B is pin compatible with my existing audio panel or with the Garmin 340 for that matter. Still, the swap requires a mechanic to sign off to make it legal. So I asked my friend Gene Baker to perform the installation. Kind of comes in a Ziploc uh, static bag here. Very nice. He's got an existing PS Engineering audio panel that this one's designed to slide in to replace. So all we have to do literally is there's a Allen key right in the center here and you basically turn it counterclockwise, it unscrews this and it, at, at the same time of releasing this latch, it forces the unit out of the, the old unit out of the tray, pull it out, slide this one in and tighten it down the exact opposite that you took the old one out and you're uh, ready to test. It does still, you know, require a logbook entry and things like that. So um, yeah, this will probably be about a five minute actual job and then maybe 15, 20 minutes of signing things off. So. All right. Well, I got the stopwatch ready. Let's give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The 450 slides right into the existing tray. Same connectors, same pinout. So all you, literally all you do is pull the old one out, slide the new one in. I'm going to show you how to do that. So we'll take your Allen key, place it in the center connector there, and just turn counterclockwise. You'll feel it loosen up right away, and then once it uh, takes kind of the slack out of the screw, you'll start to see the face of the unit start to slide out. And that kind of is designed both to help you get it out of the tray and to take the human error out of um, engaging and disengaging the pins in the back of the unit. You'll kind of feel it start to not do anything while you're turning and then you can just kind of carefully take hold of the sides of the faceplate and slide it forward. That's all there is to it. We'll set that one there, take the new one, and always anytime I pull anything out always just take a little an, a quick look at the connectors make sure there's no bent pins um, nothing in the way that's going to cause any problems with the connection of the back plate of the unit to the connectors on the back of the device you're installing. And all of the pins look nice and straight. I don't see anything in the way, so we'll just go ahead and slide the new one in. And it's kind of just the reverse of what we did to take the old one out. At first you'll do it by hand, kind of make sure it's as straight as possible. 
slide it until you kind of feel it start to touch on that uh, um, extraction screw. Once it engages, start with your Allen key. Just gently to make sure you don't cross thread it or anything, don't bind anything up. Just turn clockwise to tighten it back in. You'll feel it start to engage and it'll start pulling the faceplate back. This is kind of a preference thing for me, but I like to kind of just make sure, take a hand on each side where there's not a button, make sure things seat properly, make sure it goes evenly in. These with the, with the um, extractor in the center, um, they do a pretty good job, but I just kind of like to make sure everything seats squarely. Get it nice and snug with the screw, and you're good to go. That's really all there is to it. Just, um, we'll have you put your headset on. Okay. Um, and we'll, we'll, I'll talk to you on the intercom. After a thorough sure checkout on the ground, is, you know, it is time to take the new clear, audio exactly panel on its should. first flight. Clear. I can't wait to hear the Intelli audio in action. First, I make sure the Bluetooth connections are set up as desired. Here we got Bluetooth 1 and 2 for pilot and co-pilot. So Bluetooth 1 is my iPhone, Bluetooth 2 is my iPad. So the four flight announcement should be uh, audible. And we'll see that when we get onto the runway. Sea Rabbits Tower, Bonanza 7, Zero Tango Bravo, ready for departure, runway 9 -er. Zero seven zero Tango Bravo, Sea Rabbits Tower, runway 9 -er. turn left heading 070, cleared for takeoff. Left heading 070, clear for takeoff, runway 9 -er, Bonanza 7, Zero Tango Bravo. Clear approach. Clear Approaching runway. runway zero 09. Entered runway zero 09. 8,500 feet remaining. In from the right. Take off. Speed alive. Put your pressure good. Positive rate drop. Okay, so the Waterloo 8 is 12065. Tele audio is on auto. That means that as long as I have only one radio that I receive here, it's centered. At the moment, there are two radios on the on the COM1 and COM2 at the same time. Uh, the Intelli audio will kick in and uh, give me that spatial uh, perception of, of audio, and that's what we're going to try in a moment. But it's a seventh thing, Bravo. Would like to leave your frequency for a couple of minutes if that works. 970 Tango Bravo, if you could change boot. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to listen to both ADISs, Cedar Rapids and Waterloo at the same time. And I recommend you listen to this with your headphones on. Give you the exact same experience that I have with my headset right now. So here comes Cedar Rapids ADIS. And now I'm adding Waterloo. And it's amazing, it's like I have two people talking to me, one from the left, one from the right, I can actually hear either one. Well, that's pretty amazing. Oh, then, 5073 contact Chicago. with Bluetooth, of course, we can do a lot of things. Like, uh, listen to music. The music quality with this audio panel is absolutely terrific and you can configure it to send the same or different music inputs to the pilot, the co-pilot, the passengers or any combination thereof. So the kids can enjoy a movie in the back while Becky and I listen to music in the front seats. 
and you can configure it to mute when there's an incoming radio call or to keep playing the music, whichever you prefer. There are wired music inputs and two independent, simultaneous Bluetooth connections in the PMA450B. So far, my use for the two Bluetooth inputs has been one for my cell phone and the second one for my iPad running ForeFlight. I found that the ForeFlight alert callouts, which sort of worked with my old audio panel where one single Bluetooth input was shared between devices, are now rock solid on their own dedicated Bluetooth links. And with the nice display and line select keys, the user interface is a lot more intuitive. Skyline uh, 9 Romeo Squawk 1320. I'm impressed. 1320 Romeo. All of this made me curious about the company which designs and builds these panels. PS Engineering is located in Tennessee, and on a recent trip to Knoxville for the Beach Talk fly in, I asked the company's owner, Mark Scheuer, if I could stop by for a tour and bring my camera. And Mark agreed, so let's go check them out. Well, welcome to PS Engineering, located in Lenore City, Tennessee. I'm Mark Scheuer, and I'm very proud to show you my team that makes our audio controllers so doggone good. So what started the business was uh, the time I bought an airplane for $5,000. I had saved enough money after my first year of employment with Hewlett Packard and found a AA1A in Memphis, Tennessee. But I came to realize that I needed an intercom because my wife wanted to go fly with me. So that's how PS Engineering was started. There was a need and I was fortunate enough to have a partner. Uh, his name is Eric Person. So PS Engineering seemed appropriate because we weren't sure if we were going to be successful in the aviation business or some other kind of electronic manufacturing business. Fortunately, avionics stuck and to this day we like to believe that we are leading the audio panel control business. So from that came the very first audio panel with a built-in intercom, namely the PMA 6000. And then what's really cool is that Spaceship One and Night One, they use our audio panels to go into outer space. And then, yeah, this is kind of cool. That's our very first schematic. Then Mark gave me a tour of the production line. So, what we do is, of course, we manufacture everything here in Lenore City, Tennessee. And we do that for several reasons. First and foremost, it allows us to control our quality. Second, we know what product is most important to have on stock. So this first machine in a line of machines is from the beginning to the end where we apply the solder paste to the printed circuit boards. And then the Juki machines, they will pick up each individual part and place them on the circuit board relatively quickly, a lot quicker than a, a human being can do. And then after they go through these machines, we take it to our AOI. It's an automatic optical inspector machine. And it'll look at every every spot where the solder paste has been placed and make sure that it's right on the pads. Then after the AOI, it goes through our reflow oven where it melts the solder and makes the component adhere and electrically connected to the circuit board. This is our assembly line where we have individual technicians that will go through each of the boards and either do final assembly with the uh, metalware, the chassis or so forth. Uh, uh, obviously we do a hundred percent inspection on the circuit board itself and so this area right here is our FAA repair station and this is what I'm most proud of this has not been staged we have literally hundreds of thousands of audio products out in the field I'm counting two units for repair for the whole week and here Mark is uh, going through a test procedure for our PAC 45 digital audio controller system so here's one of our um, um, benches that we perform complete 100% testing. So you can see this test box is pretty sophisticated. There's actually a, a computer that we designed inside that test box to help accommodate um, testing all the functionality of these uh, systems. So this is the, the production acceptance test it, procedure for every product you every build product before it leaves. Every product is tested, mm -hmm. yes sir. What other good things can the PS Engineering audio panel do? The list of new features is long, and I want to just highlight a few more of them here that I think will make my life easier. One, it has programmable soft keys for other audio inputs beyond the two COM and two NAV radios. For example, each of my Avidyne IFDs actually has two COM receivers. 
one for the active and another one for the standby frequency. At the same time, I can program the labels in the audio panel to match what I have installed in my panel. Second, mute mode already existed in the 8000 BT and it controls if music is muted by radio calls and or intercom use. 450B has separate mute modes for pilot, co-pilot and passengers. Also, and this is a big improvement for me, it can save the selected mute mode for the next flight, so I don't have to reprogram it every time I fly. Third, most intercoms have different isolation modes to segregate pilot from passengers. 450B adds an interesting new mode called alternate intercom, which allows pilot, co-pilot and passengers to hear one another, but it doesn't feed any radio calls to the passengers. And finally, Phone calls are much easier to make with the 450B. The display shows the caller ID for an incoming call, and I can answer and end calls with the line select keys without getting the phone out of my pocket. Volume adjustments during the call are also made easily right here on the audio panel. Hello? Hey, how are you? I am good, how are you? Good. Hey, listen, I forgot one item on the list. Okay. That I sent over to you earlier. I'd like some deli turkey meat. Deli turkey meat, okay. Yes, if you could do that, safe flight then. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, would I do it again? Absolutely. PS Engineering took the already very good PMA 8000 BT and improved it further by adding functionality like the spatial audio, by including a USB-C power port, and by making it a lot easier to operate with the on-screen display. That's it for today. As always, Thank you for watching and I look forward to your comments here on YouTube. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and please tell your friends about it. A special thank you to those of you who support my work on Patreon, including Barry and David, who most recently joined me there. It helps tremendously. Fly safe and see you all in the next video.